She was naked when she died. Hello and welcome back to this week's episode of Wake Up 3. You have reached round 35 and we are your hosts, Molly. And Cam. And this is a fighting game podcast from a couple who loves fighting games. And as usual, you guessed it, we're starting things off with a mix-up here. And I am doing another mix-up this week. So, who's ready for a little bit of MK1? I think I am, but I'm going to be honest, it's been a bit since I've played the game. They've had some desync issues, and there's been a little bit of discourse on the state of the game. But that all being said, let's give it a shot. Yes, so... It is a little bit sad right now. I'm sure you're all, <laughs> anyone playing MK1 thus far is aware. But there was a pretty big qualifier over the weekend on Saturday. This took place online and it was the qualifier for both the East and the West of North America. So quite a stacked bracket on either side. Lots of familiar names. I have top eight characters for each side, so 16, some repeats. Okay. Let's see what you got after a little bit of rust has collected. Yeah, let's see. It's been a minute since I've played. So let's start with the East, shall we? Sure. Who do you got? Is Tanya number one? Did she win? <laughs> Tanya did not win. Damn. Tanya did not place anywhere. Her, uh... Right side up spinning bird kick didn't do the trick. No, that hasn't really caught on. Maybe if some Street Fighter players, for some reason, decide to play MK. She also has a spiral uh, arrow. She's the right side up Chun-Li in this game. Yeah. <laughs> With a lot of hands. Yeah, but she's no, got extra hands. No Tanya. Sindel. No Sindel in the East. Mm. How about Smoke. Yes, Smoke placed third, played by Just Nasty. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So I finally got one. Seven more. Um, Liu Kang? Liu Kang was a popular choice, of course, as usual. He took first place, played by Ninja Killa. That makes sense. And also eighth place, Sunio, mm. who you have come up against in some onlines. Yes. Well, just one. But... Yeah. I have lost to Sunio in a tournament because he is godlike. Yeah. So. Hmm. Oh, and also, sorry, my bad. Three times. Not just wow, twice. really? He was chosen as a secondary by Zombat. Okay. Wow. In well, fourth place. So. Hmm. Okay. How about Rain? Yes, there was a Rain. Rain okay, was okay. played by Bandinos. Bandinos. And took fifth place pretty solid johnny cage yes the ever popular johnny he has to be there right yes he was fourth the first choice of zombat okay so oh. he went from johnny to Liu kang how about raiden no raiden no raiden nope mm, baraka yes baraka yes. took second place played by the mighty unjust Solid player. Love to see some Baraka representation way at the top, huh? Yeah, definitely. Love to see it. Makes me want to play Baraka. <laughs> For sure. I just haven't played the game in a minute. Maybe you will now. Maybe I will. Jump back in. You got two more. Is there a Kung Lao? There is a Kung Lao. Kung Lao managed to get sixth place played by Splash. What place am I missing? You're missing seventh. Seventh place. It doesn't help as much as I thought it would. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I need a hint or something. He's everywhere. That makes me think Garrus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't shouldn't. think it was a Garrus, though. No, it wasn't a Garrus, unfortunately. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Who the hell is everywhere? <laughs> I already guessed the Shaolin boys. There's no more ninjas. There's no Raiden. I'm drawing a blank on this last one. You're just going to give up for the East? I guess so. No I guess... idea? For some reason, I'm drawing a blank, yeah. I'm Seventh gonna... place. He's everywhere. He's omnipresent because oh he's Omni-Man. I should have got that. Yeah. Shoot. Omni-Man took seventh, played by Rebel. I guess I wasn't thinking about the guests quite as much, or the singular guest that we have so far. Right. Peacemaker right. comes out soon. 
Yes. All right, let's move on to the West. See if you fare better over there. Yeah, let's go with Reiko first thing. <laughs> I know Rewind is one of the best. For sure. He is one of the best. And there are two Reikos in okay. the West, placing in the top eight. Rewind took second with Reiko. Han Rashid took seventh with his Reiko. Cool. Hmm. Some nice Reiko representation there. Let's go Sindel, because I know Sonic Fox was number one. That's the one that I'm certain of. For sure. You got it. Sonic Fox took number one with Empress Sindel. All right. All right. I almost said Queen Sindel, but I guess that would work too, right? Yeah, Is she I think an so. Empress or a Queen? Why not both? Okay. <laughs> I really don't know. What, I'm not sure if she's still a queen. She's regal AF, so she is. whatever. She is. Title works, right? Once she was. Oh. Now she's mm. inside her max body. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Mm. Ninjas, ninjas, ninjas. Smoke? No smoke in the West. Rain? No rain in the West. Oh, Sub Zero? Yes, a little bit of ice out in the West. Sub-Zero was used by Wanian Lauer. <laughs> I don't know if that's correct. Okay. Wanian Lauer 22 from Canada. Okay. Placed fifth with Sub-Zero. So hmm. let's go Bihan era. Let's try... I'm missing some ladies, I feel like. Let's try Molina. Safe bet. Yes, Melina placed fourth, played by Dexy Dog. Okay, cool. Melina's pretty solid in this game. You know, you know. I know a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> a Raiden. Yes, this is the one time Raiden placed. That's wild to me. And he placed eighth, played huh. by Lankiness. I hope Lankiness has some affinity for Lanky Kong. Me too. That's the first thing I think of. <laughs> maybe he's just really lanky. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Let's see. Johnny Cage. That's right. That's right. Johnny Cage placed third in the West, played by King Gambler. All right. How about Kung Lao? No Kung Lao in the West. You just have one more. Oh, just one more. It's always that last one that's getting me, just like before. It's not Omni-Man, right? No. Okay, just making sure. This is a popular choice. This is a popular choice. How More about... More popular than Omni-Man, at least for high high level. Fair. Yeah, Omni-Man has one combo, and as long as you can block <laughs> that, you're golden. I don't know. I guess I give up on this last one. I'm going to feel like an idiot. You will, because it's once again Liu Kang. Oh, no! There's never enough Liu Kang in the top, is there? Liu Kang managed to make the top eight in the West, placing at sixth, played by Wise Gemini. Mm, I should have... Okay, well, that's another player that I have lost to. Mm -hmm. so. oh. An MK11? Yeah, that was an MK11. I don't remember who he played in that one, but... I feel like he was a Kung Lao, which I guess <laughs> I guess makes sense. Shaolin yeah, Boys, yeah. maybe that's his thing. That was one I was able to take one game on, though. So it was, oh. a, two, it was a two to one set, but oh Sunio was 0 and 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sunio is definitely committed to his Liu Kang play, I think. Definitely. Well, I think overall you did pretty good. Yeah, better it's than. A Better than some weeks. Yeah, it's a bit of a different vein for us than when we're talking about Tekken and Street Fighter choices. And once again, this took place all online. This was to qualify for the pro comp. And uh, I got all of this information from Liquipedia. So if you want more stats about the MK1 pro comp, that's a good outlet to check. Well, mix up complete. Not too bad. I did miss a few, but... That's all right. I feel okay about that. Shall we move on to our weekend fighting games? Let's do. We've obviously been playing a lot of Tekken 8 still. Mm -hmm. I've made some changes since we last spoke on the podcast. Last week I was all in on Brian Fury. I've always liked Brian Fury and I've always kind of wanted to play him. I played him a little bit in Tekken 7. But now I'm playing another character that I've also always wanted to play. This one was more of like a passion thing though in 7. I'm playing Kuma. I don't know if that comes as a surprise or not, but I love his antics, his party style, his his bear moves. 
And now he has a bear electric, so what's not to love about that? I even joined a Discord called Big Bear Family. <laughs> I love bears. They're great. They're so fun. They're so fun. I keep doing this back turn move where I'll turn around, get on all fours, and then just run away from my opponent. Man, you're doing pretty well. Yeah, so he's, far, right? Yeah, my record is much better than anybody else that I've played. Nice. I think it's safe to say it's time to be a bear for Cam. I think so. I also have experienced a bit of a shift in my Tekken 8 journey. Last we spoke, I was juggling three mains. Yeah, let's see if I can remember them here. It was definitely Lars, your T7 main. Mm -hmm. Lee. Mm -hmm. And was it Raven? Yeah. Okay. I thought Raven was super cool. And he is. The first time I played him. My shift is that all of those characters have kind of taken a back seat for a minute because I'm playing as Leo these days. That is a little bit of a shocker because I don't think Leo was on your radar. Leo was just outside of my top five choices when I first played. I'm back to Leo. I played Leo the first day that Tekken 8 was out in rank. And I'm back to it. I'm back to playing Leo ranked. And I guess it's going pretty good because I made myself a Rock Howard custom. Make no customs. surprise there. Geese Howard for life. And yeah, that's my Tekken 8 update for now. But we also played other games. We did. We played a little Samurai Showdown this week. Sam Show 2019. Mm-hmm. The latest game. That was kind of on a whim. It was just a, hey, you want to play a fighter? And you kind of told me, yeah, pick whatever. And I just opened that game without saying anything. And we played for not too long, but enough to pick some characters we don't normally choose. And then, of course, I had to, I also had to go with Basara by the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did a little Basara versus Amakusa. Yes. And some of our favorites. <laughs> Basara is definitely my favorite character in that franchise. He's real good. I love him, too. He's sweet. And I know you love Amakusa. You love that Magic Man stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of high pitched shrieks from both of us in that fight. A lot Not of, us. A lot of, no. Our character. <laughs> Not us personally. <laughs> well, aside from that, it wasn't just Tekken 8 and a sprinkle of Sam Show. If you thought I was going to say MK1, sorry. Not this week. We actually tuned into a special stream put on by Fight Rise. It was their urge to fight for modern warfare we actually had a great time watching this stream it was excellent the production value and all of the heart that goes into it from fight rise is amazing to see and was so fun to participate in and it inspired us to get into street fighter ourselves afterwards and play along set we were more than just viewers because in the beginning we actually announced something special that's right. We are going to be teaming up with Fight Rise. Starting on February 13th at 8 p.m., we are going to be doing 30-minute live shows with them in their Discord. Yeah. So if you'd like to see that, join the Fight Rise Discord. It's going to be all about fighting games, obviously, but it's going to be live with the chance to jump in and ask questions of your own. Yeah. So. There will be a lot of audience interaction, Q&A style. So if you want to talk to us, ask some questions, we'll be hosting a little show over there. And it's called Wake Up 3, Rise and Fight. We are very excited. Yeah. it's It's been in the works for a little while now, and we're finally able to talk about it now that it's closer. We are very, very excited to team up with Fight Rise for a different type of show. We actually went back to our old mains. I know recently we've been talking about Ken and Luke quite a bit, but we went back to Jury and Jamie. I'm never too far from Jury. I'm a Jury enjoyer. But yeah, we went back to our old mains and had a very long set. And the result of that, I was up by a lot at the beginning, but I ended up losing overall 9 to 10. Yeah, so we kind of just did an unspoken first to 10. I don't think it ever came up that we were playing that long or to that, but... Not until we were at like 7-ish. I don't don't even think then, honestly. I think it was just a mutual understanding between the two of us. Like, we're going to 10, right? But we didn't actually vocalize that. Right. But it was... It was close. It was a lot of fun. 
yeah, at first it seemed like there was no hope for Jamie, as usual. That's not <laughs> nothing new for Jamie players, I'm sure. But I don't know. Somehow I hung in there. And I think the thing with Street Fighter that I think a lot of players will agree with is that your mental has to be strong. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the definitely. longer you play, the tougher it gets up there. It does. It's, so it's a mentally taxing game. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of focus. Mm-hmm. It was neck and neck there at the end. It could have been anybody's 10th win. Yep. But it was mine. It was. <laughs> it was. I was a little bit silent. But, you know, <laughs> you deserved it. You won. You earned it. GG. GGs. Well, with that, shall we get into the topic of today? Let's do it. Let's do it. Today, we've got a little bit of a Valentine's special coming at you. Since Valentine's Day is next Wednesday, a week from now, at the time of recording. But we're going to be talking about couples in fighting games. This is not going to be a comprehensive list of couples in fighting games because there are so, so many. I just wanted to highlight a few. And with that, let's start with my first couple in fighting games. Terry Bogard and Blue Mary from the Fatal Fury series and later King of Fighters. Terry, I miss you. We all know Terry Bogard, right? I'm not going to get too much into Terry Bogard. Is that Terry Bogard? Is that Terry Bogard? I'm not going to get too much into his history because we all know the Hungry Wolf. But I do want to talk about Blue Mary's backstory because when I was reading about her, it surprised me a little bit. I learned some things I didn't know. Oh, okay. So her real name is Mary Ryan, first off. And Mary, her father, and her lover Butch worked together as Secret Service members. You're looking at me weird already. (laughs) Yeah, I'm like, hold on. (laughs) Isn't her lover Terry Bogard? We'll get there. We'll get there. (laughs) So Mary, her father, and her lover Butch worked together as secret service members protecting the president. And then one day, her father and Butch were shot to death by terrorists. Ken? (laughs) Ken, are you there? (laughs) We're not talking about Street Fighter just yet. That's next. Crossover. Ken's there. (laughs) He's got a gun. Ken was a terrorist as usual yeah if you want to know more about ken and guns go listen to our episode about street fighter the movie because ken has a gun in that movie yeah surprise (laughs) (laughs) new projectile yeah new projectile just dropped pistol anyways they were shot to death by terrorists how sad that left mary ryan pretty upset obviously and she ended up changing professions and kind of going into a freelance position she's no longer part of the secret service okay You've noticed that one of her outfit pieces is a leather jacket. That's kind of one of her main things. Just a jacket that she always wears. I thought she just wore a tank top. Oh, I guess she she kind of only does at this point. But when she first came around, she would wear a leather jacket over the top of that tank top. Okay. I'm only familiar with King of Fighters Mary. Gotcha. Blue Mary. Well, this jacket actually came from Butch. It was a gift from her at one point. So it was a keepsake. Mm. And it was a way to kind of keep his memory alive a little bit. Another way she kept his memory alive was by naming herself, her code name, after his favorite cocktail, the Blue Mary. Is that a real drink? <laughs> yeah, apparently it's a real drink. Really? I didn't look at what was in it, but yeah, that's a real drink. So it must be like the opposite of a Bloody Mary. I'm envisioning something extremely fruity. Yeah, with like blue sweet. curacao in it or who knows. So she took her name from his favorite fruity drink and she sometimes <laughs> still drinks it on vacations. Oh, yeah. Which there I think you is go. Fun. That being said, let's jump into Blue Mary and Terry. In Fatal Fury 3, she meets Terry Bogard while on a mission in Southtown. This was her first appearance. Shortly after getting to Southtown, she meets Terry Bogard, and the two become fast friends. Okay. They kind of help each other on their missions a little bit. She's investigating some sort of scrolls that are magic. We don't need to go into those details. This is about the couple here. She helps in that game, and then in the follow-up, real about Fatal Fury, she helps Terry Bogard with his quest to take on Geese Howard once and for all. So the two become friends, and then, since then, the romance has been hinted at in a ton of the King of Fighters titles, but never really fully realized. It hasn't fully blossomed yet. In 2022's King of Fighters 15, they actually have a unique interaction when facing each other. Terry says to her, Hey, Mary, here for work, or is this a personal visit? And she replies, Right the first time, I'm on the clock, still. Still, I can always make a little time for you. So, 
it's never been fully hmm. confirmed, but there's definitely something there. It's a little bit vague, honestly, but okay. I feel like it's always viewed as, yeah, they're together, especially at this point. She helps him with a lot of things. She actually gives him a ride in the most recent canonical, Garo, Mark of the Wolves. She gives him a ride to New Southtown. Okay. So they ride together on the back of her motorcycle, and she's not in that game, but Terry is. So hmm. I can make a little personal time for you, Terry personal time that's what um, yeah that was the quote yeah. still okay make a little personal time for you terry interesting blue mary and terry blue mary and terry that's all for them for now okay so we'll see when garo city of the wolves comes out we'll see if she's in it hmm. we already know terry's in it yeah he's so. gotta be right absolutely I mean, come on he's the longtime face of the franchise and of course we have rock howard now which we've mentioned earlier yeah. It's a Rock right. Howard kind of day. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but that being said, let's jump into Street Fighter. Oh, couple number two. Couple number two. Who could it be? Ken and his wife? It is not Ken and his wife, Darn actually. It. We did talk about terrorism, but we're not <laughs> actually talking about Ken. So let's drop that part. Uh, we're going to be talking about Necro and Effie. Get out of my way! Oh. It's not the first time we've talked about them on our podcast. We talked well, about them in our Street Fighter. Did we talk about Effie? I don't know if we talked. I think we talked about the weird girl that runs okay. on street. They <laughs> yeah. actually meet at the end of New Generations, the first iteration of Street Fighter 3. Okay. Of three iterations. And it turns out they were actually both experimented on in Gil's laboratory. Gil mm. is the main villain of Street Fighter 3. And he had them both captured... Eventually, Effie gets out on her own. I'm not sure exactly how that happens because they don't say. Probably because she's small. Yeah, she she's just crawls small. through a crack or something. Yeah, she slipped through her chains or something. But anyways, she saves Necro. And Aww. she calls him by his real name, his Russian name, Ileana. Oh. So we find out his real name there. Is she Russian too? She is. Okay. She actually saves his life there. Because the place is about to explode. Gil has set it to blow because he has no more use for these people. He's done his experiments. He's done with them. He's throwing them out, throwing them out like garbage. Sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just Street Fighter things. Just Street Fighter things. So the two of them ride away on a motorcycle. Oh. Another motorcycle. More motorcycles, yeah. huh? Okay, yeah. okay. So the two of them ride away on a motorcycle as the base just goes up in a gigantic explosion behind them. And at this point, they're not sure what the future holds, but they're excited to tackle it together. Ooh. Radical. Yeah. But during the events of Street Fighter, Third Strike, we get a little more details on them. While Necro and Effie are riding across Russia trying to get away... From Gil's secret society because he's found out they're alive and he wants to destroy them because they can't fall in the hands of the enemy, according to Gil. Okay. So the secret society is closing in on the couple. They board a train. They're on this train. But now the secret society is on the train. What are they going to do? They actually decide to jump off the train because they're trapped. They have nowhere else to go. They jump off the train into a chasm and... Necro is a lot lighter because of his stretchy abilities. Okay. So Effie starts falling much, much, much faster than him. It looks like she's going to fall into the pit, and he's very far away. Hmm. He uses a stretchy ability to stretch farther than he ever has. It actually pans for a long time on his stretchy arm as hmm. he reaches down, and he grabs <laughs> okay. her last second and yoinks her back up. And at this point, after saving his girlfriend, Necro says for the first time he feels grateful for his powers. Wow. And a heart vignette forms around the two of them, and that's their conclusion on the Third Strike story. How cute. Yeah. Yeah, I really liked that one. I thought it was wholesome. And aside from that, they also, the two characters, appear in Rashid's character episode story in Street Fighter V. Oh, really? Yeah, they appear in Necro's contact photo. The two Aww. of them are in it in Rashid's phone. Oh. So they've been in contact with Rashid. They're still out there somewhere. Let's hope they come back. Oh, that's cool. I would be cool with either one of them coming back because I'm sure Effie has... She's got some powers. She's got she some powers, She was experimented too. on. Yeah, she escaped without, without us knowing how. Right. Necro and Effie often appear together in the final round of 
a match in Third Strike where, win or lose, Effie will come out and either celebrate with Necro for a victory, or she'll lay down next to him and cry if he loses. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that she shows up every time on screen, but she's dedicated. Yeah. She's lo- she's loyal. Yeah. They're a good couple. They appear one other time in Street Fighter V. They're actually in the background of a Halloween stage. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, and Necro is dressed up like a little witch. Okay, yeah. what about Effie? She's just dressed normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it. It's so fun. That's the end of that couple for now. Let's hope to see more of them in the future. Couple number three. It's Mishima time. It's Mishima time. It is Heihachi and Kazumi Mishima. Hachi Joe Kazumi. I didn't want to talk about Kazuya in June because we haven't played the Tekken 8 story yet. That's coming next week on the next episode. But I went a little bit earlier in the bloodline. Even though her first appearance was Tekken 7, she was actually hinted at all the way back in Tekken 2. Wow, that's a long time to wait for your wife. It is. It is. Would that be, that would have been 95, 96, somewhere in there. So quite a while ago, back in Tekken 2, Heihachi and Kazumi was carved into the floorboards of Heihachi's temple. And their they names? Actually, yeah, their names were carved into the floorboards together in a like a certain spot in uh, Heihachi's temple, which was his stage in that game. So were people contemplating back then, like, who's this Kazumi? I'm sure they were, yeah. I wasn't around at that time, but if you were, <laughs> and you noticed this little Easter egg in the corner of Heihachi's temple, let us know. Yeah. What did, were the thoughts there? Did you guess that it was a lover... I mean, I think that makes sense, you know, carving your name or your initials together on a tree, but hey, Haji's yeah, balls yeah. to the wall and puts it in his dojo. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was true love, so yeah. of course, they put it in the temple. That carving was actually shown off in the very first trailer for Tekken 7. Wow. So bringing that's it cool. way, way back. Yeah, I think that's really cool. And yeah. then they show off Kazumi. So they show off the carving before that even. Heihachi and Kazumi both seem to love exotic animals. Heihachi has an affinity for bears, and Kazumi has a tiger. She well, pets. isn't it interesting that the tiger is something that's, like, on yeah. his back? Yeah. And then, she, do you think that's a connection to Kazumi? I kind of do, yeah, I think so. I wonder that's if... That's kind of cute. It is, so it's, like, a way to remember her a little bit. Oh. Because he did love her, but she loves this tiger. She She's really into this tiger. She pets it during <laughs> taunts, she pets it during her outros. And she rides it out of an active volcano during the final battle in arcade mode when she's in her devil form. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Kazumi and Heihachi were childhood friends, so they've known each other for a very long time. And eventually they fell in love. After that, they birthed a young boy, Kazuya. (laughs) (laughs) No way. (laughs) Kazumi always had the devil inside her, the devil form, but she was always able to keep it at bay. There were times where she would fall ill inexplicably. Because she was doing everything she could to keep that devil power at bay. She was happy with her life. She loved Heihachi. She didn't want that to break out. Meanwhile, Heihachi was becoming a little bit dangerous. He became the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu Corporation, formerly run by his father, Jinpachi, and started planning to conquer the world. Hmm. I don't know where these ambitions came from. As Heihachi is planning to conquer the world, it's Kazumi's duty to stop him. She truly loves him. They're in love. They're madly in love. They have a son. Everything is going well. But she has to take it upon herself to stop him because she's been planted there in order to keep him, not keep him down, but in order to keep an eye keep on him. Keep him in check. Keep him in check. So she's get out of control. She is part of an old clan. It's revealed in Tekken 7 that uh, is there to protect the world and prevent anything from, I guess, going disastrous. So he's becoming dangerous. She knows she has to stop him, even though she's madly in love. Unfortunately, she fails, even in her devil form. And Heihachi snaps her neck. It's a tragic scene. Later that same year, Heihachi starts a war against Jinpachi and throws his five-year-old son Kazuya off a cliff. Pretty rude. Pretty rude. Pretty rude, dude. Pretty rude. So he really goes off the deep end after killing his wife. (laughs) (laughs) Makes sense. (laughs) I mean... He does shed, he sheds tears right after that, and then I think that's the end of his emotion. He's just purely Mm -hmm. cold after that. Mm -hmm. It is also believed by fans that the tiger coat that Heihachi wears is the skin of Kazumi's tiger. 
So oh my god. It seems that he also killed the tiger. No. Yeah. Yep. Rude. I know. Rude. I, I save that for the end. <laughs> and with that, we're moving on to couple number four. We're going to be talking about Basara and his deceased wife, Kagaribi. Basara and Kagaribi lived a peaceful life together until one day, Zankuro, the final boss of Samurai Shodan 3, killed them both. He invades their village, he slaughters them. Mm. He slaughters the whole village. Amakusa, the boss of Samurai Shodan 1, and one of your favorite characters, brings him back to the physical realm as a vengeful spirit. Wow, our fight was no coincidence, huh? Yeah, I was holding that in when we were talking Ooh. earlier, but cool. yeah, no coincidence there. They have that link. Love a good synchronicity. Yeah. When he's back in this realm, he's obviously a vengeful spirit, but he remembers his love of Kagaribi and how they died. Mm. But his anger controls him and he kills indiscriminately aside oh. from that. Oh, okay. So he is very violent at this point. He's lost his mind. He can't believe what's happened to them. They had a great life. They were peaceful. They were lovers. And now they're not together in the afterlife. They can't be. He was brought back. Hmm. There's actually a reason they're not together in the afterlife. Basara does wish to join her there. But in Samurai Shodan 5, it's revealed that Basara was actually the only one that was attacked by Zankuro. And in his last moments, he had, I don't know if it was a freak out or what, but he was the one that killed Kagaribi. What? Yeah. It turns out he, in his dying moments, he accidentally kills Kagaribi. That's crazy. It is. It's tragic. She was at his side tending to him, and yeah, he, I don't know if he lashed out from fear or what, but he kills her. So they cannot be together in the afterlife oh, because no. of this. How awful. Yeah. She knows that it was an accident, and she still loves him, and she shows up in many of his super moves, mm -hmm. and also endings as a phantom. A naked one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a <laughs> naked one. She was naked when she died. <laughs> Uh, I guess, yeah, I guess, we're, we're, we're guessing on that part. But. Yeah, she was tending to, tending to his wounds while naked? I don't know. But, tragic story. The village got attacked while she was taking a bath, and you know, what can could, you do? Yeah, it could have been. She was actually the one that showed him the truth. She, oh. she shows him a flashback, and she's like, look, honey, this is how I actually died, and... You did it. You did it. <laughs> but it's okay. She, she still loves him. <laughs> he still loves her very much, but... Mm. He's a vengeful spirit. He can't let it go. And they cannot be together in the afterlife. So here he is in the physical realm as a ghost, mm. as a spirit. I guess I didn't realize he was a ghost. So well, interesting. He's a spirit that can take physical form and didn't know that. drag people into like a shadow realm and beat the shit out of them. Yeah. He's really, really cool. He and is. Learning this backstory kind of made me appreciate him a little more, even though it's very tragic. There's a lot of tragedy in these stories. For sure. I didn't mean... To choose so many tragic couples. I'll just say that. Couple number five. This will be the final couple that I talk about today. Drum roll. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade. You should call me Johnny. This relationship didn't actually start until Mortal Kombat X, which <laughs> is crazy to me because it feels like these two have been around forever. But in MK9, he was always hitting on her and she pretty much hates him. Yeah. She can't stand him. He's a huge douchebag in that one. He has his own name tattooed on his chest. He's very full of himself. It's hard to get past that. It is. It is. But eventually they become friends, and at MKX, lovers. Many of their friends and teammates were killed in those two games, and Sonya was almost one of them when Shinnok is about to just blast her away. Johnny, however, jumps in the way of the killing blow to save her, and his green god-killing powers show up for the first time. He doesn't really know what it is, but he goes on to kick Shinnok's ass and comfort Sonya in her time of need. She's already wounded at that point, so she was toast if it wasn't for Johnny Cage. Sonya sees this gesture and realizes how much he cares for her, and eventually the two fall in love. We flash forward 25 years, and they have an adult daughter, Cassie Cage, who has taken on many of the traits of both of them. Unfortunately, they also divorced during this time, so things weren't all great, I guess. But don't worry, because they get back together before the events of MK11, and they're happy again. This is also short-lived. Yes. <laughs> in MK11, Sonya sacrifices her life during a mission into the Nether Realm, and Cassie has to hear her get exploded over a walkie-talkie. 
And then she has to be the one to tell Johnny. And it's really heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. In the new era, the MK1 timeline, they are not together. They haven't even met yet. And we see that Johnny Cage is mid-divorced. Yeah. He's already married to someone else. It didn't work out. It seems like they were young lovers and they got together early. Okay. And then she did not like what he became when he gains his fame. Which mm-hmm. kind of makes sense because he becomes that douchebag that we all know. Yeah. And by that point, he's kind of washed up. He where, is. Where we find their relationship falling apart. Right, right. So. She's had enough. She's out. And there is no Sonya yet in Johnny's life. Or mm-hmm. in the story, really. Just can she. Just can she. Just bros. <laughs> it's a nice bro story. Yeah. So, will Johnny and Sonya get together in this timeline? Only time will tell. What do you think? Maybe. I feel, like, I feel like they're destined to be together. I think so. But, yeah, if Cassie Cage still exists, where does she come from? Right, exactly. Alternate timeline? I feel like that means they are destined. I think they've got to be. So, I think they have to be. I don't know. All right. Well, that's all I have for my couples and fighting games this year. <laughs> As you said, there are plenty more. There are many, many, many. In Mortal Kombat alone, there were like five of them that I wrote down that I considered talking about. I just really wanted to talk about these two because they're both OG characters that have mm-hmm. been around since the beginning. Yeah. I think they were good choices. Yeah. Are there any of these characters you'd like to see show back up in future games? Kazumi or Oh, I Necro, think definitely Effie. Kazumi because I liked playing her in Tekken 7. And also, I never realized that she had been in existence, theoretically, for so long. But yeah. just didn't show up until Tekken 7. Yeah, I crazy. think that's really cool that that was like in the first trailer. Yeah, that carving. Me too. I really like that. That would have given me chills if I had been on the whole Tekken ride that whole time. Oh, yeah. Like 20 <laughs> and, plus years later. Yeah, that's really cool. It and is. also, I never played the story, so I didn't know about her double form. I mean, I knew it had to exist, obviously, but right. that would be cool to be able to play as too. Yeah, because <laughs> she looked really cool. Yeah, I think she looked like she had a really cool parry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> she. I think she has the coolest looking devil form. For sure. Get at me, devil gym. And the tiger's in devil form too. Yeah, the tiger turns white and it's yeah. a little bit bigger, it looks like. Yeah, it's like buffed out. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It's <laughs> it gets awesome. those board vibes. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's awesome. So I would love to see her back as well. Yeah. I also think it would be cool to actually, this may surprise you, but see Necro and Effie return in some capacity yeah i know that you were kind of anti-necro <laughs> before i'm this. not the biggest necro fan i won't lie but yeah i think i think it would be cool to see a return for sure i think they're a lot of fun and i love how close the two of them are it's really out of the five that i covered they're the closest they're the only ones yeah. that have anything close to a wholesome ending right i think i started real positive and then i just started <laughs> getting more and more depressing <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Oops. Well, Oops. that's love and fighting games for you, right? I suppose it is. What's love without a little bit of pain? Or a lot of pain if you're Heihachi, Kazumi, Basara, Kagaribi, Kagaribi. Johnny and Sonya. Yeah, Johnny and Sonya. Yeah. It's a little bit of a rocky, rocky vibe there, but all in all, it's love, baby. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well... I believe that's all we have for today. Join the Fight Rise Discord. Not the Big Bear family. Unless you're a bear main. Join that too. Yeah. But yeah, join the Fight Rise Discord and check that out if you're into Street Fighter. And if you want to see our 30-minute live shows that we'll be doing starting on February 13th. Be sure to tune in for Wake Up 3, Rise, and Fight. Hopefully we'll see you there. Hope so. Ask us some questions. Yeah. Jump up on the stage with us. It's going to be hype. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Wake Up 3. You can follow along on Twitter at WakeUp3FGC or on YouTube and Spotify at WakeUp3. I'm your host, Cam, and you can find me at Big Ruck Online on all social media. And I'm your host, Molly, and you can find me on Twitter at Concut, that's K-A-H-N-K-U-T. 
or on PlayStation. That's Jan Michaels. This is Wake Up 3 signing off. Bye. With the one with the brother. Yeah, Akira and <laughs> I don't know what the brother's name. Brother. Akira and Yeah, she brother. just calls him brother. <laughs> Damn, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lil's.